you remember, I don't know, about a month, two months ago, maybe more, we had a dying grapefruit, and I'm guessing this is going to be an orange here. They were literally on the brink of extinction, basically. You can see where I've cut them back here. They were gnarly looking on top. Pulled them out of the pots, repotted them, took all the soil off and save, saved them. And that's what you can do with any citrus tree, really. I mean, it could be on, the, on its last legs. And we got one today. I'm going to show you how to do that too. Now, these have got a little bit of leaf kill going on. We've got some caterpillar attack there. And that's all died off there. That, that was already happening when we first uh, cut it back. So it's good that it hasn't got any further than that. Ideally, you should paint that. And I didn't do that either. That's my mistake. Um, but I'm glad it hasn't died any further back. But that's great to see the result in that. Now, these are ready for a feed. Again, EK Butch and Liquid gold uh, put some around them like that now I've hydrated them first because it's always good to have the soil a little bit moist before you start fertilizing you don't want to over fertilize a plant when it's completely dry in the soil so hydrate it a little bit and then just give it a little top up like this this is our liquid fertilizer pack it's the perfect solution for every every type of plant folks so now that's all you need to do with your little trees if they're looking really healthy yeah, but if you've got a dead one like the one I got over there well we're going to dig it up you call me a gardener <laughs> and you want to listen to my tips? <laughs> no, seriously. Look, about 200 metres, no, not even, about 150 metres on that side there in our private gardens, there are eight citrus trees that are all doing wonderfully well. They're protected. We know that citrus trees don't like high wind and they don't like really anything like that. They don't like wet feet. And even about 400 metres further down, we've got a little grove of citrus that are doing really well. So there's about 30 or odd trees or 40 trees down in that direction doing well. But in here, in this... In this veggie garden, I suppose it's the worst location for a vegetable garden because we've got conifers everywhere, we've got eucalyptus on that side, we've got the wind howling through the north and the south. So the veggies have a hard time in summertime. Autumn, winter, this garden thrives. It's perfect weather for the cool climate plants. But citrus trees, well, one, two, three, four, five trees, six trees. I've moved them about three times each each and they don't want to grow. The two that I've got in pots there that I've got them in recovery are doing better than these ones. So now it's time to take it out and this is going to be the last time I'm going to give it a go here. I'm not going to build a wall around it because it defeats the whole purpose of trying to grow a citrus tree in an open area. If I have to put a, a, a wall for protection and stop the wind then don't have a citrus tree. Plant it somewhere else. <laughs> well, in Sada, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to dig this up, take out the sunflowers. Can you see the tree, by the way? It's in there. <laughs> we're going to take this tree out, we're going to put it in a pot, and we're going to cut the bottom off the pot out as well, because I think for this sort of tree here, at least if we can get the drainage to work, we'll be in a better place with it. And hopefully the wind doesn't knock it out too much. So let's get rid of all these brassicas. They've been in here too long. Look how the ground's really dry, actually. Oh, look at this. This is the shit soil that I had. That's what's happening here. You remember the soil I told you about that just killed all my tomatoes? These brassicas sort of look like they're going to grow, but nah, I don't need you. Get out. Get out. Get out. All right, let's talk about soil. Look at this. Crumbling, yeah, whatever not the way you want it to crumble. Look, look, look how hard that is. No, this was half decent soil, but it's just, I don't know, it's just gone bad. Hydrate it again, you reckon? All right, well, we're gonna do that. We'll turn it over, get rid of the cooch growing in here. Got everything going on in here besides the citrus tree. To dig out any tree from the ground, depending on the time of the year especially, well, at the end of the day, no matter what time of the year it is, when you start digging a tree out of the ground, start with your garden fork. And the reason I say that is that you can actually dig it in like that. You're not going to cut into any roots. So there may be very shallow roots sort of spreading out just below the surface, and you don't want to be cutting them off. You know, if you sever them off, then all of a sudden you're going to cut three quarters of the tree back. Now, regardless of whether I'm going to cut it back or not, you don't want to damage the roots. So let's start off with a garden fork like this. This is going to be easy to pop up. You can see that it hasn't taken and just loosen it up all the way around. It looks easy in this case here, but most times it's a lot harder, especially if they're an older tree. And it's a, a tree that's actually growing and you can lift it. Oh, there it is. Just popped it up. <laughs> There's no roots on this, look at this. Oh, here we go again. It's gone backwards. All right, I need a bucket. And I need to soak these roots in some water before we do anything else. Just filling this up with water to put some uh, 
liquid gold, which is our seaweed solution, folks. This is probably, you know, if I can be a bit biased to our own products, probably the best liquid sea, seaweed fertiliser you'll get in the market. Now, I'm going to soak this in there for a few minutes and take off all this soil at the base there. Look at the, look at the roots, how they've grown back up. You can see it was in a smaller pot in the once upon a time, so it was almost strangling itself. That sort of stuff there shouldn't happen. It should open up like that neatly. You want the roots to grow outwards, so we need to soak it so we can get all this soil off. Look, it's dry as a bone in the middle there. The water wasn't getting in there. And I know we potted this up about a year ago, or planted it in there about a year ago, but well, we don't always win. So we're going to try again. See that? Now, we're going to have a cavity in the middle here, so when we pot it up, you're going to have to do some magic to make sure all the soil gets inside there, because the last thing you want is air pockets within the root zone. All that's going to do is cause the plant to die back. So while it's soaking in there, we're going to cut this top part back. We've got some die back already on it. Have a look at this. So you can see parts of the roots have died off, so that's no good. Cut that off there. There's green in there. That's died right back there to the knee or the knuckle, whatever you want to call that. Just cut that off completely there. And all this is useless because we've got a lot of, you know, there's bugger all roots. There's no fibrous roots and there's no feeder roots. And they're the fine little hair-like roots that we need so the plant can actually hydrate itself and grow. So we're going to cut this right back here as well. You there, right, mate? All right, so soak that. Oh, good on you. <laughs> <laughs> the baby, huh? Look at them. They look so cute, don't they? <laughs> so what I'm doing is because we want to have good drainage to help it with the drainage and avoid it getting bogged down. I'm going to grow it in this pot to start with, and I'm taking the base off so that as the tree grows its roots, hopefully it does grow its roots and they grow downwards, and we'll get it to grow into the ground below. So that way it can search out its feeder roots, its taproot, and whatever roots it wants to grow down below and stabilize itself. And if it doesn't get too boggy down there, at least, well, if it gets too boggy down there, it's got this pot, part of the root system in the pot section above ground, which will allow it to stay drier. Now, we don't want it to dry out completely. We don't like the soil going hard like this. It's probably my fault I haven't been watering it enough because I couldn't see with all the brassicas in there. But that's okay, so we'll just loosen this up again. We haven't lost a tree, folks. We're just going to start again. So we've lost, a, well, probably a year. Let's hydrate this as well. Strawberry, out of the way. That's it. One thing about a no-dig garden, can I just mention this quickly? There's one thing having a no-dig garden, and there's, there's another thing having a garden that doesn't breathe at all. And if it's hard like this, really hard, and it doesn't get any airflow, it becomes hydrophobic, that's not a good no-dig garden. You want a good no-dig garden which, you know, you can put your hands in and you can dig it up and with your fingers and grab a handful of it and you can see the microbes in it. Well, you can't see, but you can see the activity. You can see the worms. So here, it's dead. Maybe I had too many plants in here. Maybe? <laughs> I think I did, but anyway. We all learn from our mistakes. So we're putting some black root down in here as well. I'm going to put a couple of handfuls around this little square metre. So, and I'm going to hydrate that. I'm going to use the seaweed or the liquid uh, gold product that I've got in here. That's our tree. There's nothing to cut off on the roots. They're all okay. They just didn't want to grow. Actually, we have got some growth there. You can see some little fine ones. Are they, are they tree roots? No, they're not. They're actually from the brassicas. I bet you they are. No, they are part of the tree roots. Oh, I just cut some off. Never mind. It'll grow back. So let's just pour this in here and get some... Okay, there we go. Hydrate this up. Beautiful. Put some more afterwards. Now, folks, use quality potty mix. Get yourself some good quality potty mix. Unfortunately, where I live, at the moment, I haven't got any. I've only got some seed raising mix. I'm using these sea greens from Hal's. It's okay to grow it in there. There's not going to do any bad to it. I just got to nourish it because there isn't any fertilizer mixed into this. So I'm going to sprinkle this into the 
a little bit at the bottom like that. And as they say, do it once and do it right. Looks like I'm going to do it three times and hopefully I'll get it right. That's okay there like that. Now remember I talk, talked about the uh, air pockets inside? To get the, you shake the pot, hit the pot, knock it around. Make sure you get all those air pockets filled in. Use your fingers to poke it in if you need to. Like that. I don't mind a bit more around here. Like that. Just get a little bit below the top surface because we want to create a little well there for it to drain. And that's good just to help it a bit. And our liquid solution. Actually, we'll put some black grit on that too. Now, black grit, if you don't know what that is, it's a calcium silicate with a phosphate-based fertilizer. So it, it, it's meant to fix all the missing nutrients or locked up nutrients in your soil. Look at that, that's beautiful. I love that. I love it when it drains like that. Ah. Uh, that's getting in there. So that's going to need three or four waters like this continuously to make sure that it actually soaks in and all the air pockets are eliminated. You don't want any air pockets. See, we're starting to see some roots there. I'm going to have to top that up. Like that. Now I've used some Eco Butcher liquid gold on this. And hopefully, is there any left? Yeah. Okay. And that's it. That's all we can do. Now hopefully the tree settles down, starts to grow its roots, and if it's really happy it'll push its roots down below. I've got to keep this hydrated, so I haven't been hydrating it properly. I've got to put some mulch in here and hydrate it, and then we'll just sit back and hopefully it starts to grow for us. So watch this space folks. That's all we can do. Now if I'm any, any good with this one like I was with the other ones, I should see leaves coming up in about a month's time. Fingers crossed. Check out our website, VasilisGarden.com. We've got our Eco Boost or Eco Butch, sorry, liquid gold and black red, all at discounted rates and a free delivery across Australia. It's all at VasilisGarden.com. From me, Vasili, Bye, Desi. Bye.